We were in the middle of a storm trying to hold on, but you could see the determination. We made a pact at the very beginning of this that no matter what happened, that one of us would be with somebody when they were dying. It was a dreadful time, but knowing St John's, if we have to go back there again, we will. If you look at the origins of St John's, it was founded 240 years ago as a fever hospital. While that seems like another world, the past few months have taught us that for all the medical advancements since 1780, the world can still be brought to its knees by a pandemic. There's a lot of history behind these walls, but so much of it is about the courage of St John's and the people who come to work here every day. It was that way in 1780, and it's still that way today. I came here in 2008 and I had decided that I would retire in April of uh, this year but because of Covid I decided I couldn't just walk away. It's been the worst of times and then again it's been the best of times because we have seen such bravery in that staff had stayed on, worked long hours, supported patients, didn't walk away. We had seen what had gone on in Italy. We had seen what had gone on in China. We never thought it would hit St. John's. It was like nothing that we'd ever experienced before. The fear factor was there, the fear of the unknown. This was at a new level. So I was really fearful for the staff. I really was, I could see it in their eyes that they were terrified initially. I have three children myself and a husband, and I suppose I was worried that I would come home, bring it home and I would give it to them or I suppose mostly I was worried that my elderly father, he was probably my biggest priority outside of work. From the time that the lockdown came, I didn't visit him at all at all. It was actually three months from the time that the lockdown came till I got to see him again. We have 89 beds here in St John's, 70 of which are medical beds and the remainder 19 are surgical beds. During Covid, of course, surgery stopped so all our patients were patients with medical conditions. First floor in the hospital was, during COVID, the isolation area. This is where all our COVID uh, suspects and COVID positive patients were cared for during this time. There was one particular week that we did feel overwhelmed, and I did. This was a completely different, I could feel this tightness in my chest, and it was the week of Easter. It just, I felt that we were at one stage, it was like a sinking ship feeling, and I'd never felt that before. So if one patient tested positive here, then all the close contacts of all staff, of all disciplines that had looked after that patient then, they all had to go and self-isolate, which meant we had phenomenal um, levels of staff that had to go into um, self-isolation for 14 days. I think we probably would have sunk at one or two stages only for the support that we got from other areas in the hospital. While we looked after the patients, the hospital in general looked after us. That epitomises St John's and the way the hospital operates. Our staff didn't see themselves as heroes, but they were in my eyes. Decisions were being made faster, people volunteering, being asked to do different things, and no one thought twice. We were in the middle of a storm trying to hold on, but you could see the determination. It was that, that feeling that our, we won't be able to give proper care here. How are we going to give proper care? How are we going to be with the dying person? Because we made a pact at the very beginning of this among ourselves on the floor that no matter what happened, that one of us would be with somebody when they were dying. So we had one um, gentleman who was with us and he had um, three children and unfortunately the families were not allowed in. We knew on the final day that it was coming near his time um, and he was deteriorating. So we were able to do a video link call. It was heartbreaking. They were there and they were there. Um, Daddy, don't leave us, don't leave us. Daddy, they were saying, um, please, we're begging you, please get better and come home. He was restless. He was starting to get a little bit agitated, but because he heard them and then his two grandchildren came on and they started talking to him and he changed. He, 
it was, it was unbelievable to witness it. He just, like his breathing went really calm. His facial expression changed. He started flickering his eyes. The two grandchildren, he, he heard them and he knew they were there and he could hear them. And we let them talk for a while. And then when the, we came off the call, we put on, they had brought in ear, earphones and he loved classical music. We put on the classical music, we put a little picture in his hand of his wife and himself. And I, I think it was three hours later, he passed away, so peaceful. In my career, I have looked after a lot of patients that have passed away before, but I think till the day I die, I think looking after the COVID patients, it will stay with me solely for that reason. During COVID-19, the saddest of scenes were witnessed here. The families saying their goodbyes, these goodbyes will never be undone. It was a dreadful time. As a society, we can't afford to go back there. But knowing St. John's, if we have to go back there again, we will.